Good evening, everybody. Okay, if we start with agenda item one, the webcast and introduction, I'd like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet or filmed and will be capable of repeated, repeated viewing or another used by such third parties. Please also be aware that if technical difficulties interrupt the meeting that cannot be overcome, I may need to adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Apologies for absence. Uh, none received, Jim. Okay. Um, declarations of interest by any members? None. None? No. Okay. Minutes of the last meeting, can I take those as correct? Agreed. 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 Okay, thank you. Now, members, I will be working using the participants section tonight, so please raise your hand if you wish to speak. I'll only be taking one intervention on each item from each councillor, one question. Um, I'm not intending to, we've got a long agenda this evening, and I will not be allowing members to come back once they've raised a question, um, other than members of the cabinet, of course. Um, so, Reports of portfolio holders, Councillor Sam Kane. Thank you, Leader. Yes, I just wanted to uh, let um, members know that a, a new series of grants to support businesses through COVID uh, has been introduced by the government. And it's being funded by the government, um, but being administered by local councils. Um, there's three uh, various schemes. Uh, the first is the local restriction support grant closed and that applies to businesses that have had to close under the national restrictions. That scheme is up and running and applications are available through our website. The second scheme is the local restriction support grant open, and that's intended for businesses that can remain open but are severely impacted by the restrictions combating the spread of COVID. And it's for those businesses severely impacted but not required to close. Uh, that again is also open for application uh, on our website. And the final one is the uh, additional restrictions grant, and that's for businesses that remain open but are severely impacted um, and don't qualify elsewhere. Um, and uh, it is a discretionary scheme, the details of which are still being worked through with county. But as soon as it is live, it should be in the next couple of days that we can get that up and running on the website. So I just wanted to bring that to members' attention. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kane. Um, it's really good that we actually managed to get something out uh, in the media straight away today. I thought um, that, that was first class and we need to keep our businesses well informed of what's on offer out there to help them through this difficult time. Absolutely. So thank you very much. Any other members of the Cabinet wish to make a report? No? Okay. So therefore we'll move on to public questions. No public questions, Chairman. Okay. So item seven is the report of overview and scrutiny. Councillor Sartin. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, well, the reality is I have nothing to report because we haven't met since your last cabinet meeting, uh, but we do have a meeting coming up on Thursday of this week. And I will just mention that we have um, Mr. John McGill and Dr. Anne Lim from the Innovation Corridor coming to uh, speak to us and update us on that particular organization. Um, and I know that uh, Mr Woodhall has put out an email to all members directing them to a, a website for the organisation if anybody wishes to just find out a bit more about uh, them before the meeting on Thursday. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, any questions for Councillor Sartin? If not, no. Thank you very much for that report. Um, moving onwards in that case, we've got item number eight, Council House Building Cabinet Committee, 8th of September. Councillor Holly Whitbread. Thank you, Chairman. And before I start my, my series of reports this evening, um, I'm just going to seek officer's advice on item 12. I was hoping to defer that to a select committee, if possible, and bring it back at a later um, uh, Cabinet meeting. That's the new policy on disposal of HRA assets. After discussion and reflection with my officers, I think this is best place to go to probably community select committee in the first instance. Okay, which officer wants to comment on that? Okay. 
say? Um, if members of the cabinet are happy. Yeah, members of the cabinet happy with that? Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, fine. Carry on, Councillor Whitbread. Thank you, Chairman. So on to the Council House Building Cabinet Committee from the 8th of September. I hope that all members have had an opportunity to read the minutes and are, are happy. Um, at this meeting, we talked again about um, stage phase five of the Council House Building Programme. We also spoke about the St John's the Baptist Church um, key worker housing development, which we actually had a really exciting meeting with um, Epping Ward members earlier in the week. And we will be having a um, a meeting with the wider council members as well to discuss this exciting project. So I um, hope all members have had a chance to read that and are, are happy with the recommendations. Thank you. Uh, I've got Councillor Neville down would like to ask a question. Is that correct? Yes. Yep, that's correct. Yes. Thank you, Leader. Um, I'd like to ask the portfolio holder, um, in terms of the uh, parking extra parking allocation policy in, in the minutes it refers to parking uh, all uh, new developments having park allocated parking is that true and if so from what stage um, if it's okay uh council whitbread i'm going to refer to um deborah fenton on this okay, thank you Ms. fenton in terms of our council house program going forward, um, as you'll know, we've committed to liaising and being more collaborative with members and members of the public. And in that, we will be um, asking members of the public um, what, what their needs are in the local area. Um, of course, any application we make, whether with or without um, car parking, has to go to the planning committee for so, 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 so um, you know, it's, it is always dependent on, on the planning permission we get. However, what we are committed to is making the best use of um, what we've got and what the opportunities are. So if I can give you an example, if we do have parking already at a nearby scheme, but it could be um, better designed to, to meet the needs of the residents, then we'll be doing that. So I'm not sure if that answers your question. Okay. Councillor Neville, are you happy with that response? Yep, good. Okay, thank you very much. Can we agree those minutes? Oh, sorry, Councillor Morgan. You, you're you're yeah. muted, Councillor Morgan. <laughs> That's better. Um, regarding the culvers at Matching Green, um, last, some time ago, it was refused planning permission because of lack of parking when, once they demolished the garages. Is any progress being made on this site, please? Um, perhaps Councillor Holly Whitbread or Deborah can answer that, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Morgan. Um, I, I would note the collaborative approach we're taking going forward, so I'm sure this will be something to be looked into, but I'm not sure if uh, Deborah can talk about the specifics of that scheme. Deborah? Uh I'm afraid I haven't got the specifics, but um, I'm quite happy to um, put, put, put a note in the minutes if, if that's helpful, or contact you directly, which, whichever you prefer. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, super, thank you very much. Okay, no other questions, members, can we agree those minutes? Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Item nine, income recovery strategy and policy. Councillor Holly Whitbread. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this is a policy in relation to our income, um, into recovery of our um, rents. Um, it's previous to the report that we had in 2014 and is a continuation of that strategy in many ways. Um, we do focus on prevention. So first of all, we, we want to make sure that people are in the um, best possible position to, to be able to pay their rents and to prevent any arrears. Um, so we do take this preventative approach first. Um, obviously, it's really important that people do do pay their um, their rent on time, and we take this action to to ensure that they're in the best possible um, position to do so. And this was actually trialled throughout COVID. This approach, making sure that people we were collaborative with our tenants and always had the best possible communication to try and avoid eviction. Um, obviously, if it does come to the stage where people are evicted, people can no longer apply for a place on our council house list, but they can apply on, on the homelessness register. Um, but th that's that report, Chairman, and I hope members have had an opportunity to look at it this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Members of the Cabinet? 
Any questions? No. Okay. Any other members? No. Okay. Can we? Oh, Councillor Wixley. Councillor Wixley. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I think actually Councillor Janet Whitehouse had her hand up before me. Yes, item nine. I'm having problems with my uh, my uh, device. Okay, good. Whoever wants to go first, Councillor Whitehouse in that case. Are we on item nine now? Councilor? Yes, we are. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, well, first I'd like to say how pleased I was to hear um, Councillor Holly Whitbread say that item 12 is going to Community Select Committee because I wanted to express my concern that this is another housing policy, item nine, that's going direct to cabinet with the only member involvement being the portfolio holder. Um, policies used to go to communities or housing select committee. And actually in the report, it refers to the fact that the original um, policy was taken to um, housing select committee in um, 2014. So um, I have expressed my concern to uh, Councillor Sartin for OSC to ask if they might be able to take it up. And she said she would take it to the the chairman's meeting, but there should be more member involvement as in the past, please, to these new policies. Thank you. Thank you, that's noted. Uh, Councillor Holly Whitbread. Thank you, um, Councillor Whitehouse. Just wanted to comment that actually you've taken that on board and um, this, this report, as you would have read, is a very kind of minor amendment from the 2014 report, but we will make sure that in future all reports go to select committee. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Whitsley. Yes, thank you. Yeah, my question relates to page 52 of the agenda. Um, at the bottom, 4.6, uh, it's about visits in cases where people are, are struggling to pay their rent. I just wondered um, what those, what the situation is with those visits uh, at present, given the, the current COVID uh, crisis that we've got. And if they were still being undertaken or if they were being deferred, but I, that was the first question on that. Uh, the other thing is it, it says this gives an opportunity to detect any safeguarding issues or vulnerabilities which might not be apparent uh, through an office uh, visit. Um, presumably, when we do send our officers to do home visits, that they pick up possibly on other things uh, like compliance with tenancy agreements. Um, for example, making sure that uh, gardens are in a reasonable condition. Um, so it, it's basically two questions. Are the visits still being undertaken? And uh, can you clarify the four things that uh, officers pick up on when they do home visits? Okay, Councillor Holly Whitbread. Thank you, Chairman, and um, thank you, Councillor Wixley, um, for that question. We certainly um, appreciate the importance of such um, visits in understanding further issues that, that may have arisen with, with specific tenants. Um, my understanding is that during um, in a couple of weeks ago, before the latest um, lockdown, these were still kind of going ahead with COVID secure measures, obviously social distancing, masks, et cetera. But I would just ask Deborah what the situation is within the current lockdown. Uh, thank you, Councillor Whitbread. So, so Councillor Whitbread's correct, those, the, the visits were taking place. We have halted the visits um, at the moment due to lockdown and we'll be picking them up as soon as lockdown has finished because the, the kind of people we're visiting in the community are people who are absolutely desperate for support so it's really important that even though we've got a pandemic we are still going out to see those people because a lot of the issues that come up don't necessarily come up in an office environment um, like Councillor Whitbread has referred to just in terms of um, visits, yes, we pick up on tenancy issues. We also pick up on safeguarding issues. Um, the housing office, the income recovery officers um, ha have lots of contact with other teams, particularly the Safer Communities team and the neighbourhood team for the uh, minor ASB. And just to, um, just, just to confirm to members that we are, shortly going to be starting our tenancy audits and we will be visiting um, all tenants over a period of time just to ensure compliance with the tenancy um, agreement and also to pick up on any other issues which may be a risk to them or the council. Thank you, that's very helpful. Councillor Wixley, I said I wasn't going to take people back again but is there any, is, is that another question or just an, 
just to sum up well, on what you said. Well, if I, I actually have a problem which I'm attempting to deal with now, and I just wondered if, um, if it comes to it, I could contact Deborah and uh, seek some advice. I Obviously, be the best way the meeting. Yeah, if we take that offline, that, that'll be fine. Okay, uh, Councillor Heath. You're on mute. Thank you. Uh, the point has been made. It was really to uh, emphasise what uh, Councillor Whitehouse was saying, but Councillor Whitbread has already uh, answered it fully. So I think all those decisions need to go through a proper community uh, yeah. committee. Yeah, agreed. OK, thank you. Councillor Murray. Uh, yeah, repeating what other people have said, there's someone who has in scrutiny, uh, fully in White House said, and very happy with the portfolio holders reply. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Okay. In that case, members, can I take this to the vote? Is everyone happy with the recommendations? Great. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Then we go on to item 10. The Morden Bricks and Mortars, Castle Whitbread. Thank you, Chairman. And this is a bit of a good news story this evening, following on from the service charge report on the 20th of July, which came to Cabinet. And this is in relation to what we'll be investing the service charges in, and that's ensuring that our estates are in a good, um, good condition, which we know um, in the recent COVID crisis is more important than ever before, having them spaces that we live in and around us, which are of, of high quality. And that's what we're trying to achieve here on our estates in Epping Forest. Um, we will be um, bringing about a new um, consultation method, which will involve speaking and consulting um, tenants, including established residents associations to ensure that we get the best possible outcomes for those who are living on the estate. So a really exciting um, project and I'm really pleased um, to be bringing this forward. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Members of the Cabinet. No members of the Cabinet? OK. Therefore, I'll go to Councillor Stephen Level. Thank you, Leader. Um, I, I welcome this whole approach um, and I think it's uh, long overdue and really good. Um, my question is, I, I understand that it's an easy to go to house um, tenant associations in the first instance, but in phase two of this project, have you allocated or worked out any areas in Buckers Hill which you might be uh, uh, wishing to do the same thing? Councillor Whitbread. Uh, thank you, Chairman. And we are looking at the kind of consultation. I know one thing that I flagged up is we want to hear all voices um, from across the, the the estates, not just those who are particularly vocal kind of on tenants associations, younger voices, older voices, we want to hear widespread representation. So we will be looking at that in more detail, looking at who we're consulting. And um, when we look at projects in Buckers Hill, I'm sure I'll be speaking to Councillor Neville directly. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Murray. Uh, Thank you. Welcome this report and the philosophy. Uh, I think uh, work existing uh, residents associations will be uh, uh, really important. And I think possibly the idea of joint consultation in Pacific areas with the FDC working with the uh, associations. I um, mean, obviously, the associations would have to agree with that. But I actually think that would be very good. And I'm glad that there will be room for uh, member involvement because we are obviously understand our uh, uh, patches quite well as well. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Pond. Yes, thank you. Um, I put in a special word for the Oakwood Hill Estate, uh, with which we started some years ago uh, when Dave Stallon was the housing portfolio holder. Uh, and that taught us, I think, the need uh, to engage other partners, in this case, the county council and the town council. The project that was adopted then seemed to go quite well. But my question is really, will we adopt uh, in estate improvement plans a holistic way of proceeding, not just confining ourselves to EFDC issues? Okay, thank you. Councillor Holly Whitbread, did you want to come back on that? 
Uh, thank you, Chairman. Just to say that actually this the idea behind this and the consultation we're using is to have a much more far reaching holistic approach and ensure we're getting the best for the, the whole community. So I'm sure that we'll be engaging with partners from across the board when we look at these estate improvements. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor John Whitehouse. Thanks, Chairman. Yeah, I mean, we quite regularly look at estate improvements, so it is good to see this uh, this come back, and thank you for that. Um, there's just two issues I wanted to, to clarify. Um, the first is the time scale. It talks about commencing the pilots um, next year, um, and then reporting back after after year. Is that reporting back on all six of the estates in here, and then it will be, as it were, someone else's turn, or you know, what? If just have a bit more clarity on what the timescale is and what then happens after that. And secondly, where does the sheltered housing estate um, fall into this? I mean, some of the sheltered housing estates, you know, are fairly small and you know, don't have foreign constituted residence groups, but do have quite uh, strong networks. And certainly I can think, think of some where there is a need for some uh, you know, more mobility, um, scooter storage, um, particularly in the light of the sort of recent fire. Um, regulation changes or enforcements um, or, or landscaping and will they be included in this this package or are they a separate uh, consideration? Thanks. That's the whole Whitbread. Thank you Chairman. Um, I believe the report which refers to the six initial schemes for the first year um, and that's the time scales on them and then we'll be reporting back and then reviewing others. In relation to sheltered housing we've got a sheltered housing review coming up on our stock which will go through select committees and be a, a wider piece of work upon the state of our um of our sheltered housing and ensuring it kind of meets modern modern standards and what the community and our, our tenants like to see um, i'm not sure if um, mrs fenton wants to comment further on that thank you so so in terms of the um bricks and mortar scheme um it, it, it is all um, ring fenced within the hra i think that's um quite important to say at first um in in terms of the six estates yes we will be um looking at those this year we will be um, um liaising with county council and town councils however it but it is worth bearing in mind that this is predominantly a scheme um, for, for residents by large to, to really think about what would it, would it improve um, the estates for them. So what would it what would make their estates a better place to live? In terms of um, things like scooter storage, etc. I mean that that's absolutely essential and that's got to be in the program um, going forward. So now I'm talking about the asset management program. And we're just at a point at the moment where we're looking at asset management. Health and safety will be up there and has got to be, um, you know, put, put before anything else. Um, and in terms of the sheltered schemes, um, just echo what Councillor Whitbread said, um, that, that, you know, we, we, we've got a report and we're working on the action plan at the moment. Thank you. Councillor <laughs> Wixley. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, my, my question is on page 67, uh, paragraph five, there's a list of the six residence groups, uh, but there's actually one missing, I think, unless it's folded up, which is a dead and tenants panel, which I used to get invited to uh, because I represent one of the so-called dead and wards, and I used to attend them on a regular basis that they were very well attended. Um, I think there were some problems towards the end, which may have led to the demise. But given that um, you know the open area covers quite a big area, it must be one one of our biggest estates, if not the biggest. Um, it's a bit unfortunate that um, the dead and tenants bill doesn't appear there. I just wondered if um, the portfolio could shed any light on that, please. That's the Hollywood Road. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Wixley. We'll, we'll look into that and look into the status of the uh, Debden Tenants Panel. First, I did actually think they, they still existed from attending tenant meetings, but we'll check that out. And of course, if they do still exist and are active, we'll get them involved in this process. Right, thank you very much. I've got no other members requesting to speak. We've got recommendations before us. 
Can we agree those recommendations? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Agreed. Moving on to item 11, Fitness for Human Habitation Act 2018. Councillor Holly Whitbread. Thank you, Chairman. And um, this report is also in relation to the improvement of our estate and looks at a five year um, bin store replacement programme, which will see our um, bin spaces given a bit of a revamp and tidied up, which is obviously good for the, the general cleanliness of, of, of our estates. And um, this is all in line with the Fitness for Habitation, Human Habitation Act of 2018 and will be funded directly from the HRA. And um, I hope that members can agree these recommendations within the report this evening. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Any members of the Cabinet? Councillor Nigel Avey. Yeah, I'd just like to comment. I think this is an excellent idea. Often we have issues, BIFA have issues with collecting from estates and uh, we do need to revamp the bin stores and also people's attitudes to recycling. Um, so very good news. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor John Phillip. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, uh, glad to see this coming and um, that it's been fun from the HRA. Can I just have uh, Councillor Whitbread's um, assurance that this is within the, the current budget and she's not looking for additional money from the HRA for this? Thank you. Yes, I believe this is within um, the current budget. Obviously, we, we need to do this um, to comply with the Fitness for Human Habitation Act. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. OK, we'll go next to Councillor Nigel Bedford. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just reiterating the fact it's nice to see this project going forward. Uh, one concern I do have, I've raised it before, I believe, is just make sure that the new bin stores are constructed out of a flight fire retardant type material. I oh, don't build them out of timber or we won't have new stores for very long. Thank you. Point there made. Councillor Whitbread. Thank you, Chairman. That's a really useful, useful point and always take on board Councillor Bedford's advice. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Darjan Sapunga. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I welcome the uh, the program here for the bin stores, etc. Um keeping in line with the human at the uh, Homes for the Human Habitation Act 2018. That's exactly what's expected from the private rent sector. And coming from, from our council's point of view, we're just going falling in line with what's expected for everybody to have a decent home to live in. But having the bin stores there, recycling, etc., but also putting the bins away is, is good. So I welcome that. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Did I see Councillor Heat wanted to speak? Um, thank you, Chairman. No, it was... No, I don't need to. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. There's no other members, therefore you have the recommendations. Can I agree those? Great. 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 Superb. Okay, we then go, item 12 has been deferred for select panel to have a look at. Um, item 13, the medium term financial plan development and scene setting. Councillor Philip. Thank you, Chairman. And uh, perhaps I shouldn't start with a smile at this stage. Um, I'm not going to go through the actual appendix in, in great detail. The key part here is we're, we're starting to set out the context uh, for our budget cycle for, for next year. Um, I know I said this the last time I reported, but it's still true that there are probably more things that we don't know than we do know. Um, and we will uh, work through them as we go forward. We have made a number of assumptions as we take this uh, forward. We do expect to see some government support going on into next year, um, which will help with some of the uh, costs that we're likely to see. I, I do want to uh, flag up that we are looking at a deficit of 2.1 million at the moment for next year. Uh, that's after the assumptions of an extra 100, 1 million from the government and using 1 million from our reserves. To reduce that so we have a significant task on hand to address that um, we are progressing through uh, the budget setting and we'll be bringing back further recommendations uh, and reports to make sure that we're in a good, as good a position as we can we have the uh, statement from the treasury coming later on this month although we don't expect to see our figures for next year before mid-december at the earliest I guess a couple of things just to pull out <clears throat> from Appendix A is the impact 
the pandemic has had on us. Um, it's worth pointing out that amount of the funding that we have received from government is for things that we have made losses on, but other funding has come in which has gone out immediately to grants. Uh, Councillor Kane already highlighted that we've got another set of grants going on at the moment, but it is worth pointing out that we had uh, great success in getting our first level, well, lot of money out very quickly, and that there were discretionary grants available for people who could have applied for them as well. We have, it's no surprise, the major areas that are, we're being hit are our car parking and our leisure centres, both areas which have significant contribution towards uh, our finances. Just calling uh, a couple of numbers out clearly on page 118, we can see we're looking at a gross expenditure of just under 20, uh, 73 million, of which, in terms of the funding of that, council tax only uh, amounts to 8.3 million. Our current assumptions are around council tax that we will be raising that by five pounds uh, next year and taking that forward. It does have implications on, uh, on our money going forward in terms of funding. You can see that on page 124, so that's five pounds for a band D property. Um, there are other options, and uh, as uh, I know you, Leader, are particularly concerned, as we are in the Cabinet, to make sure we minimise the pressure on our residents. We'll be looking at what we can do to reduce that. But it's only, and I wasn't going to use this word, it's only prudent at this stage to look to see what we can do to make sure that uh, we can continue to deliver our services. That's what this medium-term financial strategy is about, being able to continue with our services and the offers to the residents while keeping the council still able to run. And it still remains a, a source of pleasure that we aren't in the position of Croydon Council uh, having to go to only statutory services. Chairman, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Councillor Philip. Members, any members of the Cabinet? No? Okay, you've stunned them all with silence. Councillor Heap. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just a few questions, uh, and I'll be as brief as I can. Um, page 120, miscellaneous income. Uh, stable stream of 2.9 million assumed from 21-22 for Qualys. Got a bit of fleshing out on that. What is that? Uh, where's that coming from? Um, page 121, 3.3.3, 3% uh, 3 pay award. Is that um, a thing that's expected, really? And then if we go to page 122, Again, 3.3.3, 3. 3. Uh, which um, individual fees will have to go up? Is there uh, any idea on what those are? And generally, there's no mention here that in 2020, uh, 2022, there needs to be £33 million repaid to the Public Works Loan Board. But that doesn't appear to be anywhere in this, uh, which is a puzzle, because surely that would feature in the medium term financial forecast. That was it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Let me take them and see if I remember them all. Um, I will do my best, Councillor Heat. Uh, the miscellaneous income, that will be picked up uh, when the Paris business plan comes to Cabinet, which I believe is scheduled for December. Um, that will take the detail. Uh, and just to cover all these questions, I think the key point we're looking here at the medium firm, term financial strategy, so we're painting with a broad brush. It's not down to the individual details which come out in the budget themselves. Um, the employee costs in terms of the uh, annual pay awards, the indications were that um, uh, the NJC award for next year would be indeed be 3%. We don't know for that for sure yet, but it makes sense to model on that. If that uh, cost is less, then that will be a significant benefit for us as you can see from the table just above 3.3, .3, uh, the inflation costs on employees are driving a, a significant uh, amount of the rise in our overall costs. So if that can come down, uh, that will be a good thing. Uh, we are a local negotiation with uh, our unions, but there is initially at least some tie to the NJC awards. Um, 
no, in 3.3.3, there are no indications on particular fees going up, the ones that are capped. Uh, some of them are statutory, uh, and that has still to be determined, and it would depend on those which other ones would need to go up, and that would be part of the budget setting for next year. I'm assuming that the uh, Public Works Loan Board loans that you're uh, referring to to be repaid are the HRA ones. Uh, in general, the medium-term financial strategy is looking at the general fund and not the HRA. When we come to uh, full council in February, we'll be looking at the budgets for both of those funds, and that's where we would take more detail in terms of the Public Works Loan Board. Thank you very much, Councillor Philip. Any other members? No? Remarkably quiet. I mean, I, I think what I've got... Like can I just say a word? Yeah, Please, Nigel Bedford. Uh, Nigel Bedford. Uh, just one point there about if the, the NJC award comes out at 3%, I wholeheartedly support it because our staff have worked tirelessly throughout this, this uh, programme of, um, you know, the, the lockdowns. Um, and if, it's, if that's what it is, that is what it is, and we will work towards it. However, I'll take on board Councillor Phillips' point that at the moment it's a guesstimate, and everybody has to have a guesstimate, otherwise we wouldn't be able to prepare the figures in this way. So, um, yeah, just a point that I think our staff have worked extremely hard, um, and, and that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Phillips. Yes, I, I would quite happily echo Councillor Bedford's comments about our staff. I believe that we have done... Uh, very well through the period of COVID, and that's down to our, our staff working. Um, what I am conscious of is that uh, working in uh, a private business, private businesses tend to have significant financial pressures uh, and have routes open to them that perhaps we don't have as councils. Um, we have not been in a position as a council because of our shortfall to make jobs uh, redundant. I don't get to that position, um, but we have to balance the books. And as I pointed out, we are still over £2 million short of where we need to be for next year. And £2 million short is, shall we say, a problem which will not go away unless we are very, very good at finding savings or finding additional income. I'm not hung up on one or the other. I'd actually prefer to make it by generating additional revenue. If we can do that, that's great. Um, Jim, if there are any other cabinet members who might um, like to make uh, comments on the assumptions that we've included in the budget, I would be quite happy to still listen to them and work out how we take this forward. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, Councillor Phillip, we will be having numerous debates around the budget in the weeks and uh, months ahead of us. What I would say is, is the excellent work that's been done by, by your finance team and yourself in dealing with all these unknowns, because that's the hardest point at the moment. There are so many unknowns. And uh, until we find out what's in the government's one year settlement, we really won't know which direction we're taking fully with regards to council tax increases and deficits and how that deficit will be dealt with in the future. What we do know is we've just gone through the most difficult financial position that one could imagine us facing. And the good good thing was our council had it was in a financial position to be able to weather the storm. And as you quite rightly um, highlighted, the likes of Croydon now are really struggling um, to um, provide the services they need to. Um, Thank you, Jim. If I could just come back on that and, and echo your uh, comments about the uh, finance staff. Uh, I was hoping tonight as part of this to be able to say that we'd had our account signed off for last year. Our part was done. Unfortunately, the auditors have not been able to keep their side of the bargain. And uh, that uh, announcement of getting the account signed off will have to wait for another day. But thanks to the team for um, doing significant sterling work to make sure that we've kept our side of the bargain. The good thing about that is we actually know what our financial position is. We're getting a better grip on where we are quarter by quarter, and that gives us the solid base that we need to make sure we've got the correct budget for next year. Great. That's brilliant. Thank you. No other members wishing to speak on this item. Therefore, can we note the report and agree the recommendations contained in? No, Chief. Thank you. Okay.
We now move on. There's no any other business. Um, so we go to the exclusion of public and press. Um, item 15, to consider whether under section 100 in brackets A, in brackets four of the Local Government Act 1972, the public and press should be excluded from the meeting for the items of business set out below on grounds that they will involve the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in the following paragraphs in brackets of part one of schedule 12A of the act as amended or are confidential under section 100 in brackets A in brackets two. Um, there are two items to go into excluded um, session four. Uh, one is item 15, the pr uh, project brief for kickstart and item 16, proposed letting of land at Northwood Airfield. Members, can we agree to go into private session? Agreed. Thank you.